So in this example, I've just filtered this um, plan by this epic, and I went to the epic directly as an example, and went to these issues and selected the team that I wanted to be associated with the issues. I also gave them estimates. Now this estimate field can be configured either in hours or days at the plan level, and this field relates to the remaining estimate field on the issue. And uh, this plan uh, and the auto schedule feature will always use the remaining estimate field for its calculations. Now you may notice this little lozenge next to these teams. This is because the team is not actually associated with this plan. We actually added this team to the uh, forecasting plan and we shared the team. So we could add this team to the plan, we can see here there's no team and we could go and add an existing team just like what we did before with the same metric as well and that means that we would be able to select the team from within the plan view you might notice right now we can't actually select any team at all so i would encourage this kind of configuration um, when you need uh, to add a team to a plan and only use maybe one team or you can just make sure that all issues maybe inherit a team from a project through automation so that a user doesn't come and have to select each team manually here. Of course, you can always bulk update issues in a plan and using the bulk actions item here. So it makes, uh, makes changes to these issues, uh, bulk issues rapid and much faster than the, the bulk change feature in JIRA. Uh, and this is how we would do most of our bulk changes. So from here, what I can do now is I can actually use the schedule feature um, to go in and to go and uh, map out all this work. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now that we've added the team to this plan, the auto schedule feature is now livened up. So if we click this button, we can, for example, decide which values that we want to be uh, altered. In this case, we already know the team that we want to be doing this work, so we're not going to um, we're not going to allow it to to write uh, any data over the teams. But you could select this value here and allow the plan to automatically select the team based on how we um, encourage the plan to map issues to various teams using filters. So I'm going to say only map empty results, and we're going to preview the results. So what we can see here, if I maybe move this back to weeks and scroll back, we can see here that these issues here have been scheduled all for the same week. And that makes sense because we have given this team, the, uh, the new customer team, six hour, uh, 20 hours per week. And for this week, we can see here that there's only 18 hours. However, if we were to go to our forecasting plan, we might get a different result. And this is because the resources associated uh, with this team are also resources in other teams with various and varying capacities. So if I were to go and change this plan to forecasting plan, and then we can see our new customer team here, if we were to press the auto schedule button, we might see a different result. Well, that's what the expectation is anyway. So let's go and have a look at when it put this work in. 15th of November to the 19th of November. Okay, let's go back to this plan. So we can see here that it actually mapped it to the 11th of November to the 17th of November. So here you can see a slight change, but a really important one, because we actually want to be trying to schedule our work at the very highest level, because then it takes into consideration all of the various factors where our resources might be part of various teams, multiple different teams. So this is a really good example of why it's important to actually schedule at the highest level, but at the team level, we should be trying to at least uh, estimate and map the team to each of the tasks that are going to be undertaken. 